huyo Ghana hiyo ya Egypt kwa hiyo tunasubiri ya kwetu Tanzania nao ni Rwanda wamepeleka kahawa zao kwa hiyo muda si, si, si rafiki ila ni kwamba mfumo huu wa guided trade initiative unatoa msaada wa kiufundi kwa wafanyabiashara wa nchi zilizo kwenye majaribio kwa hiyo kwa sababu atakuepo watu wa CFTA kutoka Ghana nadhani wao wataelezea zaidi kipengele hiki ili kueleza nini wanaweza kuwasaidia wafanyabiashara kuingia kwenye hilo soko hasa wanajua kwamba kosi za usafiri kupeleana kwenye hiyo ipo kwa hiyo nadhani watatoa elimu katika katika hilo nini ambayo wanacho cha kuweza kuwasaidia wafanyabiashara kwa hiyo jamani kwa kifupi ni jukumu la wafanyabiashara wa Tanzania kuchangamkia hizo fursa tusiwe nyuma tusiwe washangiliaji na sisi tuwe tunashangiliwa asante kwa kunisikiliza sasa labda ni chukue nafasi hii nafanya double roll ni mkaribisha tena katibu mkuu aweze kukaribisha meza kubwa kwa ajili ya ya na mtazamaji wa TBC1 habari ni matangazo ya moja kwa moja ikiwa ni mkutano wafanya biashara kuhusu kujengewa uelewa wa kuhamasisha kuchangamkia fursa za kibiashara chini ya mkataba wa uhuru la biashara Afrika na malengo yamelezwa hapo kwa nini mkutano uko hapa na wafanya biashara nini wafanye lakini urais uko wapi na ni yapi maeneo hasa yanalengwa tupate kusikia kile ambacho anakizungumza naibu katibu mkuu wakati huo ni saa moja na nusu upande wao kwa tunaona bado kama robo saa hivi pengine ili tusipoteze muda ningeomba sasa pale muda utakapofika tunaomba turidhie kidogo tu tuichangamishe ile ratiba yetu pengine labda tuwaombe TCCIA kwa dakika chache kabla hatujawapa meza kuu watuonyeshe mfano uh, wa ile cheti cha uwasili wa bidhaa na mheshimiwa mwenyekiti mimi napenda kuita ni ni pasipoti ili bidhaa yetu ya Tanzania yale marori yale tunayoyaona yaliyotoka Kenya ili mamlaka ya kodi ya Ghana ya, ya, ya kubali yaingie kwenye soko lao bila kuyatoza ushuru lazima uwe na cheti cha uwasili najua wengi mnafanya biashara za nje kwa hiyo mnafahamu kile cheti kwa hiyo hicho cheti kuna cheti maalumu ambacho wenzetu watatufahamisha ambacho kwa sasa nadhani kinatolewa kwa mtandao bwana nebat kwa dakika kumi kumi tano karibu Mheshimiwa uh, Dr. Ashatu Kijaji, Waziri wa Uwekezaji, Viwanda na Biashara. Mheshimiwa Lord Gatenga, mwenye eh, kurugenzi mtendaji wa CTI. Uh, wana Gilead kurugenzi mtendaji wa TPSF. Mheshimiwa Ali Gugu Katibu Mkuu, Naibu Katibu Mkuu Wizara ya Uwekezaji, Viwanda na Biashara. Uh, wafanya biashara wa sekta mbalimbali mabibi na mabwana uh, na wasalimu kwa jina la Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania na shukuru kwa kufika uh, uh, hapa liko mbele yenu kuwaelezea tu kwa kifupi uh, kwa kuelezea kwa kifupi unisaidie kuna Uh, wakati tunaendelea ku, kuiweka hapa ni kwamba kwanza awali ya yote napenda kushukuru eh, kushukuru kwamba kushukuru serikali yetu ya Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania kwa jitihada ambazo wamekuwa kifanya kwanza kuifungua nchi yetu kiuchumi lakini eh, maalumu kwa wizara hii ya uwekezaji viwanda na biashara jitihada kubwa ambazo wamekuwa kifanya kuhakikisha kwamba a uh, sekta binafsi nchini inakuwa lakini pia kwa kutuwezesha kuwa uh, kuwa na ushirikiano tumekuwa tukishikiana kwa karibu sana na sisi TCCA tunapenda kushukuru pia kwa kipekee kwamba tumepewa jukumu hili muhimu sana la utoaji wa hivi vyeti vya wasili wa bidhaa jambo ambalo uh, tumekuwa tukilifanya vizuri na nipende tukuambia wenzangu wa Tanzania kwamba tumekuwa tukitoa hivi vyeti katika ofisi zetu zote pale ambapo bidhaa zinavuka mipaka kwa maana hapa Dar es Salaam tunatoa hapa makao makuu 
na wengi wenu hapa mmekuja kushuhudia na kupata hizo huduma kwa wale ambao wako mikoa ila mipakani mikoa yetu imekuwa ikifanya uzoezi wakati fulani e, tumekuwa tukitumia sana njia za za kikawaida za makaratasi lakini tunapiga hatua mbele kwa sababu teknolojia pia inakwenda kwa kasi tumeanza kuvifanya hivi vyeti vipatikane kwa njia za kimtandao kwa hiyo hii ni hatua kubwa na tunashukuru pia kwa ushirikiano tunaopata kwa wadau mbalimbali kwa sasa saidi zoezi litakuwa kwa njia ya mtandao hapa nitazungumzia kwa kifupi uh, hiki tulichokijia hapa hivi vyeti vinavyotolewa mahususi kwa ajili ya soko huru la Afrika African Continental Free Trade Area hivi vyeti tumeshaviandaa zile taratibu za kuviandaa tayari zimeshapata uthibitisho kwenye mamlaka zetu zote e, na sasa ziko tayari kwa kutumika kwa hiyo lakini kabla ya kwanza kutumia pengine tutahitaji kuandaa mafunzo hivyo najua hapa tuna wakurugenzi wenye viwanda wenye taasisi mbalimbali wa miliki tutaomba mwaruhusu wa taalamu wenu tutakapoitisha mafunzo wapate mas, mafunzo walau kwa siku mbili ya matatu ili sasa tuanze kutumia hii fursa ambayo tumeelezwa kwamba huenda tunufaiki nayo sana lakini fursa ipo tunaweza tukawa tunafanya juhudi kubwa kwenda Ulaya lakini kumbe hapa jirani kuna hiyo fursa tulitembelewa hivi karibuni na balozi kutoka Namibia anasema alipokutembelea mikoa yetu alipofika Mbeya akatamani aibebe ile ardhi akaiweke kwenye nchi yao ya Namibia hasa alipotembelea mashamba ya mpunga kwa sababu kule wamejaribu kulima mpunga imeshindikana hiyo natuambia kwamba tunalo tunafusa kupeleka mchere Namibia basi kwa kifupi naomba niwasilishe kile ambacho tunakifanya tuna, tuna, tuna kama TCA na kuhusu hivi vyetu vyetu uh, jambo la msingi uh, hapa kwa sababu ya muda sintazungumzia sana ni mtiliko wa namna gani ambavyo tulipanga kuwasilisha lakini nizungumzie kifupi tu kuhusu uh, soko hili huru la African Continental Free Trade Area kwamba hili ni, ni soko kubwa ukitambua kwanza ukubwa wa nchi zetu hizi nchi 54 linatupelekea kwenye eh, jumla ya watu bilioni ngapi bilioni 1.3 yapata bilioni 1.3 wana wanategemewa kuwepo katika ile soko ni soko kubwa kuweza kulifikia na tunasema uh, katika hizi tu, 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 katika hizi nchi 55 uh, za African Union uh, tuna tuna jumuiya za kikanda kama nane sasa zote zinaletwa kwa pamoja na soko hili na tunategemea kwamba din ujazo wa biashara ama uh, mapato kwa ujumla katika mataifa haya yote tukiyajumlisha ni bilioni 3 at trillion 3.4 dola za kimarekani kwa tutaona kwamba hata uwezo wa kununua hizo bidhaa tunao uwezo wa kuzalisha tunao soko tunalo kwa hiyo ni fursa ambayo iko wazi mbele yetu tunaweza tukaitumia uh, kwa kifupi tena nitaelezea kwamba kuna fursa mbalimbali kabla ya hapo sawa nimeshazungumzia fursa ambazo tunazitegemea uh, ni kwamba sisi ndio wazalishaji wa malighafi raw materials zinapatikana hapa katika hizi nchi e, ambazo ziko miongoni mwa Afrika lakini tumezungumzia pia kwamba ni rahisi sasa kuuza kwenye masoko ya, ya ndani kwa sababu pengine hata gharama za usafiri zitakuwa sio kama za kwenda Ulaya hata viwango pingine vinaweza visiwe vikubwa sana vigumu kuvifikia lakini fursa pia kutengeneza ajira ndani ya bara na kukuza uchumi wa bara kwa ujumla na sasa sisi TCA tunahusika kwa namna gani kwanza e, kwenye sela tumekuwa tunashirikishwa vizuri kikamilifu lakini tumekuwa tukishiriki katika ili swala ambalo tumesema tu, kwa mahususi kabisa tumekabidhiwa kutoa hivi vyeti na hapa tuta e, muda si mrefu tutaona ile sampuli ya hicho cheti ambacho tumeshakitengeneza na tumekuwa ni wadau muhimu katika pia kutatua changamoto za ufanyaji biashara uh, non tariff barriers ambazo sio za kikodi za kikodi zina mfumo wake lakini kuna vile vikwazo visivyo vya, vya kikodi tumekuwa na mfumo wa kuratibu maoni ambayo tuna ripoti kwa usika yaweze kufanywa kazi lakini pia tumekuwa tukishiriki katika kutatua changamoto mbalimbali hasa pale zinazohusu ufanyaji biashara. Kwa hiyo tunatoa wito tu kwa wafanyabiashara kwamba sisite kutuona pale wanapopata vikwazo vyovyote vya kibiashara. Uh, 
Sasa hapa tulizungumzia kidogo vyeti vya uasili wa bidhaa. Hili tutakuja kulipata kwenye mafunzo katika siku zetu zile tunazoziandaa. Nitaomba hili nisilizungumzie hata kriteria za hizi certificate of origin kwa sababu ni somo pana. Wataalamu wetu watakapoalikwa watatujuza vizuri ama tutawapa hata hizi nyaraka mtakuwa nazo kwa ajili ya kuelewa. hizi uh, zote zinaonyesha uh, uasili wa bidhaa tunapataje uthibitisho wake ni katika vitu ambavyo tutaviandaa tumeandaa mafunzo tutayawaalika uh, labda sasa mimi nataka niwapeleke kwenye kile cheti ambacho tumekidesign na nataka mkione e, hiki hapa hiki kwa jinsi kinavyoonekana uh, kiko kwenye sorry nataka nikirudie uh, tume, tumekionyesha kile ambacho sasa kiko E, uta, uta, utajaza maelezo yake lakini kwa karatasi pia ninayo hapa kina nakala tano na maelezo yake kwa sababu sasa ndiyo tumekuja ndio tuna, tunajifunza nitaomba uh, wenzangu kutoka siti ya e, TCCA bwana Messi Filipo huko huko hapo nyuma Nita, nitaomba yoyote ambaye atakuwa na mahitaji kujua hiki cheti kina vitu gani atamuona bwana Messi Filipo yuko nyuma pale naomba simame Uh, kwa ajili ya kupata ufafanuzi wa kicheti anayo nakala ya hiki cheti lakini ukija pale TCCA utapata maelezo na katika mafunzo ambayo tutaandaa hivi karibuni tutaeleza kwa kirefu inaeleza hatua zote ambazo unatakiwa kuzijaza ili kupata hiki cheti na labda ni, ni seme kwamba hivi hivi vieti kama nilivyosema hapo awali tumekuwa tukivitoa kwa taratibu za kawaida sasa kwa sababu teknolojia inakuwa na tunategemea kwamba tutazidi tuna, tunataka kuenda na kasi ya teknolojia kama ambavyo ulimwengu umekuwa kibadilika tumeamua kuviingiza kwenye mfumo wa kimtandao na hivi karibuni mtaanza kuona kwamba hata shughuli zetu sasa zitaenda kwa kasi zaidi kwa hiyo sisi ni wadau muhimu na tunapenda tunapenda kushukuru pia ushirikiano tunaopata kwa wadau wenzetu wafanyabiashara kutoka kwa serikali lakini tuna taasisi za sekta binafsi zingine wanatuunga mkono wa wenzetu wa CTI na wenzetu wa TPSF kwamba wote tunafanya kazi kwa pamoja ya kuwahudumia wa Tanzania kuhakikisha kwamba uh, uchumi wetu unakuwa na biashara zetu zinakuwa. Baada ya kusema hayo mimi ningependa kwamba sasa ni ishie hapa e, labda e, ni, ni ulize kwa naibu katibu mkuu kama pengine kuna kuna mtu atapenda ufafanuzi kama muda utaruhusu E, niko hapa na wenzangu tutajaribu ku, kutoa ufafanuzi kama utahitajika. Uh, labda ni ruhusu kama ita, kuna mtu atahitaji ufafanuzi mfupi kuhusu hivi vieti tunavyotoa na ni kitu gani tunategemea kukifanya. Karibuni. Jamani tumpashie kidogo TCCA. Kama tulivyosema yeye ndio mwezeshaji kwa maana yale ma container ili yaende ni lazima ujaze kile cheti ambacho kitaonyesha kitaonyesha uthibitisho kwamba hii bidhaa imezalishwa kutoka nchini kwetu. Kwa hiyo ni jambo muhimu kama ambavyo ameeleza tutatumia fursa hii kwa wale ambao wapo tulifahamu kwa hapa lakini tutakuwa tuna muendelezo wa kuwa na uh, mijadala ya namna hii lakini mtu mmoja mmoja bado anaweza akafika kwenye ofisi zao kuweza kujifunza. Kwa vile ratiba yetu ina fursa ya kujadiliana. Nadhani lile ambalo alilisema kama kutakuwa kuna hoja ya kuuliza swali pale baadaye kwenye majadiliano basi tutatoa fursa hiyo kwa wakati huo. Mheshimiwa Waziri kwa sasa naomba uridhie yule mwenzetu ambaye atatujoin kwa njia ya mtandao atakapokuwa tayari tutaomba tuwe flexible kwa ridha yako tumruhusu lakini hivi sasa ningeomba uh, nimkaribishe bwana uh, Gilead Terry uweze kusema machache kwa yale uliyosikia kwa maana ya muktadha ule tulioweka lakini pia utumie fursa hiyo sasa kumkaribisha uh, bwana Tenga akiwa akiongea sasa kwa maana ya sauti ya sekta binafsi kabla ya mheshimiwa waziri hajatufungulia rasmi mjadala wetu karibu sana habarini za asubuhi Habarini za asubuhi. Mheshimiwa Dr. Shatu Kijaji Waziri wa Uwekezaji, Viwanda na Biashara. 
itifaki imezingatiwa mwaka 1198 takriban miaka 500600 iliyopita Vasco da Gama alipita kwenye pwani ya Afrika Mashariki akasimama Zanzibar akasimama Kilwa akasimama Malindi ukitaka kuangalia historia ya biashara ya Tanzania kwenye vitabu vyetu vya historia tunarudi miaka hiyo ni moja ya ushahidi wa mwanzo kabisa wa taifa letu wa eneo letu kama jamii ya watu ambao wameunganika na watu wengine duniani Tanzania sio taifa la kujificha kihistoria tumekuwa taifa la kutoka la kwenda kufanya biashara la kujumuika na watu wengine duniani Nilipokuwa TPSF kama mkurugenzi wa sera mwaka 2016 na ndugu yangu naibu katibu mkuu akiwa wizara ya viwanda na biashara tulipigia kelele swala la ACFTA kwa sababu Tanzania ni taifa la wafanya biashara kihistoria kijiografia na kiuhalisia leo kwa hiyo TPSF tunaunga mkono asilimia moja ACFTA majukumu yetu ni matatu la kwanza kutoa taarifa zilizopo juu ya fursa za African Continental Free Trade Area kwa kama tulivyoanza leo kualika baadhi ya wanachama wetu ambao tunaona wanaweza kuchukua fursa katika soko la Afrika hilo ndio jukumu ambalo tutaendelea nalo jambo la pili kutoa mapendekezo namna ya kuwawezesha hawa wafanyabiashara ili kuchukua fursa ambazo ziko kwenye soko hilo biashara haziendi zenyewe biashara zinasaidiwa zinawezeshwa namshukuru sana Nobert kwa niaba ya TCCIA kuonyesha mfano wa namna ambavyo biashara zinawezeshwa certificate of origin ni kitu kimoja wapo ambacho kinawezesha biashara kutoka Tanzania kwenda nchi jirani lakini jambo la tatu sisi kama taasisi ya sekta binafsi lazima tumsaidie mfanyabiashara mmoja mmoja kuitazama biashara yake na kuangalia soko lipi linaweza likamfaa mfanyabiashara yeye yeah, ana mambo mengi yanayomfanya ayasimamie kwa kipaumbele kuanzia asubuhi mpaka jioni hawezi kuitazama gana mheshimiwa waziri pamoja na katibu mkuu pale ofisini mna majukumu mengi mnasimamia watu milioni moja nchini hamwezi kwenda kwenye biashara moja moja kujua nani anaweza kufaidika na kunufaika kwa soko la Afrika hilo ni jukumu letu sisi TPSF kwa hiyo sambamba na mpango huu sisi tutaanzisha program ndani ya taasisi ya sekta binafsi kuhakikisha kwamba tunafahamu wafanyabiashara wapi wako wapi biashara zao zikoje na ni kwa namna gani tunaweza tukawasaidia na kuwajengea uwezo ili kuweza kulifikia soko la Afrika tuendeleze ule utamaduni ambao umekuwepo kati ya miaka 500 600 700 ya kihistoria ya Tanzania kwamba taifa letu ni taifa la kibiashara na sisi tuko tayari Mheshimiwa Tenga karibu Mheshimiwa Waziri wetu wa wizara yetu ya uwekezaji viwanda na biashara Mheshimiwa Naibu Katibu Mkuu Mkurugenzi Mtendaji wa TPSF Waheshimiwa wafanya biashara na wenye viwanda na wote mliohudhuria hapa Mimi kwa vile nazungumza kwa niaba ya sekta binafsi e, naona Terry ameshanizungumzia kwa hiyo 
ningependa ni ni seme kwa kifupi sana nisi ili nisirudie rudie kwanza kabisa ni wajibu wetu sisi wafanyabiashara na wenye viwanda hususan kusema kweli kutoa pongezi sana kwa kumheshimiwa waziri na wizara yako lakini pia tuna wajibu wa kumshukuru mheshimiwa rais kwa kazi kubwa ambayo ameyafanya katika swala hili na maswala mengine yote ambayo yanaelekeza nchi yetu katika utangamano mheshimiwa rais amekuwa mstari wa mbele kwa kusema kweli kuhakikisha kwamba tunakuwa sehemu ya dunia kibiashara Sasa mheshimiwa waziri la pili la kusema ni kwamba uamuzi huu wa kujiunga na mkataba huu ni uamuzi wa kitaifa umefanyika baada ya mjadala wa muda mrefu sana Terry amesema na katibu naibu katibu mkuu pia amesema kumekuwa na mjadala wa muda mrefu sana na sekta binafsi imehusika kila mara na hakika TPSF na sisi CTI tumekuwa tunatoa mwakilishi katika haya mazungumzo kwa kipindi kirefu sasa sina hakika kama ni miaka mitatu au minne lakini tumekuwa tukituma mwakilishi kwenda kujadiliana kuhusu eh, huu mkataba na jinsi ambavyo sisi kama nchi tutaingia kwa hiyo ni jambo ambalo halikuzuka tu ni jambo ambalo wafanyabiashara na wenye viwanda kwa maana kupitia CTI wamehusika nalo na kwa kusema kweli mheshimiwa waziri na mheshimiwa wote ambao mpo hapa ni jambo jema unazungumzia kuwa sehemu ya jumuiya ya watu bilioni moja pointi nne badala ya kuwa jumuiya ya watu milioni sitini sijui milioni hamsini tano Kenya sijui hamsini tisa sina hakika siku hizi na kadhalika na kuwa jumuiya moja ya watu bilioni moja pointi nne labda china tu kama nchi ndio ina eneo moja lenye watu wengi kuliko hilo kwa hiyo ni jambo kubwa na ni jambo muhimu ni katika dunia ya leo haliepukiki tunaambiwa GDP combined GDP ni kama dola za kimarekani eh, tatu pointi nne bilioni sasa kuna njia uwezi ukasema bado unabaki mwenyewe hata kidogo kwa hiyo tungependa tu kusisitiza umuhimu wa jambo hili ni muhimu sana sio jambo ambalo tunaweza kufanya au hatuwezi kufanya na sisi wenyewe kama e, wenye viwanda na wafanyabiashara tumekuwa sehemu ya uamuzi huo kwa hiyo Semina hii ni semi kwa kifupi ni muhimu sana kwa maana ya sasa ya sensitization kwa sababu sasa fursa ipo lakini lazima itumike. Ndio wanavyoambiwa hapa wenzetu wa Kenya hao hao kama sisi wako mpakani tayari wameshafanya e, Ghana wamefanya Rwanda wamefanya. Sasa tunavyoambiwa hayo yamefanyika sisi hatujafanya kabisa nadhani ndio maana nimepongeza sana mheshimiwa waziri nadhani ni wazo jema na ni lazima lifanyike tuanze kuhamasishana la mwisho ambalo nitaka nisitize ni kwamba huu wa masachaji kwa nini ni muhimu kwa sababu kwanza kabisa unazungumzia mfanyabiashara ambaye ana kiwanda chake na mali yake afanye biashara huyu mtu hawezi kufanya biashara kama hana uhakika kwamba atafaidika. Kwa hiyo kuna haja ya uelewa na ndio maana ndio muhimu wa e, semina kama hii, mkutano kama huu na kwamba ni, ni wajibu tuendeleze jitihada za kufanya. Pia lazima sasa tukubaliane tunafanya nini. Na tujitahirishe namna gani. Nadhani ni naibu katibu mkuu amesema vizuri, amesema mfano. E, pale penye ushindani lazima uangalie yale ambayo unaweza kuyafanya vizuri zaidi kwa sababu ni ushindani 
Kwa hiyo mfano hata hata kujua tu ni bidhaa gani sisi tuna comparative advantage hiyo tu yenyewe kwa sababu mfanye biashara wa kawaida na kiwanda chake na mambo nane ya kufanya e, uko anatafuta hela uko anatafuta soko uko bahati mbaya siku siku hizi mambo mazuri lakini zamani umeme katika huku kwa hiyo akili zake mambo mengi yako kwa hiyo vitu vingine lazima tumsaidie mfanye biashara huyu wetu na nafurahi kwamba hiyo ndio commitment ambayo tumeipata kutoka wizarani na tuna viongozi wengine hapa ndivyo ambavyo tutafanya upatikanaji wa taarifa ni jambo ambalo linakuwa taken for granted lakini sio kila mfanyabiashara anaweza kupata taarifa sahihi za kumwezesha afanye hiyo export na hili ni soko sio tu la kuuza lakini pia na kununua mtu mwenye kiwanda chake mathalani amezoea kuleta vitu kutoka China e, vya kumsaidia kufanya shughuli zake kiwandani au Uingereza au Ulaya sasa unachomwambia huyu mtu bwana badala ya kwenda huko hebu angalia Kenya hebu angalia Misri angalia South Africa sasa lazima umsaidie lazima kuwe na njia ya kumsaidia kusema kweli yeye fokasi yake ni biashara yake hivi vingine kusema kweli mara nyingi kwa hiyo ndio wajibu wetu sasa na nawashukuru sana kusema kweli wizara kukuanzisha kwa maana ya serikali na sisi private sector ndio wajibu wetu kuwapa elimu wanachama wetu juu ya nini wafanye fursa hazikuwa maana kwa neno fursa ni very general fursa zenyewe ni zipi kwa hiyo mimi naendelea tu kusisitiza na kuunga mkono kwa kusema kweli kwamba hili ni jambo la muhimu sana na tuna, tuna, tuna wajibu wa kuliendeleza nisitize jambo lingine moja la ubora wa bidhaa sasa hivi hatuna njia tumekuwa kwa maana ya ule ujirani tunapambana na wenzetu wa Kenya bidhaa zao tan bond blue bend na kadhalika sasa hivi sasa tunaanza ushindani wa Afrika Mheshimiwa Waziri na wenzangu wote nadhani wote tunafahamu kwamba nchi zingine za Afrika ziko mbali sana Huo ndio kweli mwenyewe Kwa hiyo lazima tupambane Hasa kwenye aspect ya ubora haiwezekani ukauza kama bidhaa yako haina ubora ule ambao wa kushindana na wengine kwa hiyo hapa ndipo ambapo tunahitaji msaada kama anavyosema tuwasaidie vipi e, wenye viwanda vyetu vyombo vyetu e, mfano hizi regulatory authorities zisaidie vipi zifacilitate namna gani kusudi kuwe na ease of doing business na kadhalika kwa hiyo mheshimiwa waziri mimi naomba nimalizie kwa kusema tu kwamba e, sisi kama sekta binafsi hili ni jambo letu hatuna njia e, sio kwamba tuna option It's not that we have an option ya kusema we can do it or not hapana. Ini dunia utangamano lazima tupambane ili tufanikiwe. Na tuna wajibu kusema kweli kuendelea kuhamasisha watu wetu, kuelimisha na kuwasaidia wanachama wetu ili wafanye vizuri. Mheshimiwa Waziri, naomba nimalizie hapo na kwa kusema kweli naomba nitakie kikao hiki em, mema na kiwe mwanzo wa kazi kubwa ya kuendelea kuhamasisha wafanyabiashara wetu na wazalishaji wetu. Asante sana mshimoze. Asante tena mshimoze. Naam, mtazamaji ni mkurugenzi mtendaji wa shirikisho la wenye viwanda Tanzania City I leo Dugatenga akieleza yale ambayo anayaona katika mkutano huu na matunda ambayo yatapeleka Tanzania mbali lakini pia Afrika kwa ujumla. Bwana Muhammad Ali ambaye ni mkurugenzi wa idara inayosimamia biashara ya bidhaa na ushindani yuko tayari kuunganishwa Mr. Muhammad Ali Director for Trading Goods and Competition in the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat you are now welcome to address uh, our national stakeholders meeting chaired by our honorable minister Dr. Shatu Kijaji Minister for Investment Industry and Trade The context of this meeting is to sensitize the private sector in Tanzania to take advantage of the opportunities 
that are enshrined in the AFCFTA. We would want to hear from you in terms of the GTI, the Guide to Trade Tool or Initiative, and how can our private sector in Tanzania use that tool to ensure that they use the opportunities that are you know, obtained under the African Continental Free Trade Area. We know this is an initial intervention. We hope to engage you in future, but we allow you time, uh, at least half an hour or 15 minutes of engagement so that you can make your presentation. Karibu sana, you're welcome. Uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Minister, and good morning, um, colleagues and friends and brothers in, in, in Tanzania. Um, my name is Muhammad Ali. I'm the Director for Trading Goods and Competition within the AFCFTA Secretariat. And I'm here uh, with me, uh, Dr. Halima Noor, our uh, market access uh, expert and trading goods expert in the AFCFTA Secretariat. Uh, let me uh, start by providing my uh, apology. We, as we're speaking now, we are uh, attending the annual AFCFTA retreat. It is actually outside uh, Ghana. Um, uh, we hope that uh, uh, um, maybe in the future we have more uh, Tanzania-focused uh, uh, intervention with uh, maybe uh, a visit uh, to Tanzania from uh, a team from the Secretariat or receiving uh, um, a Tanzanian delegation to Accra to have more dedicated and more focused um, uh, discussion that uh, actually focus on the potential and the comparative advantage of, the, of Tanzania. Uh, so I allow me to quickly try to explain what is the Guided Trade Initiative and uh, uh, the key features of the uh, Guided Trade Initiative and what we have done with the six countries or the seven countries, Tanzania uh, supposed to be the seventh country. Uh, so, uh, we will explain what we have done, what is the Guided Trade Initiative is about, and after that, we'll be uh, very much interested in hearing some questions around what we have done, what uh, questions about what is the Guided Trade, uh, how it works, uh, any uh, other questions um, around the agreement in general, uh, uh, and hopefully the next time we uh, come more prepared to uh, more specific examples and more specific uh, cases toward Tanzania. Is that acceptable? Uh, allow me to, to, to start with the background. Um, we have the agreement of the AFCFTA uh, announced that the start of trade officially, uh, our heads of state said that the start of trade officially is the 1st January 2021. Uh, that came in during the peak of COVID-19, uh, uh, the peak of um, uh, disruption in the um, uh, uh, supply chain, disruption in, in the trade uh, um, in general. So uh, from January 2021, we, did, we haven't noticed a significant or actual trade happening uh, or crossing the border under the AFCT, even though the agreement entered into force in uh, June 2019. So uh, we, in the AFCT Council of Ministers and in the AFCT Secretariat, we created uh, uh, what we call the first ministerial directive under the AFCT that allowed, we said, uh, let's all move together with uh, at least 90% of, of the products uh, uh, the technical term we were uh, using in the AFCFTA is Category A, uh, the list of products that will be liberalized 100%, uh, which is 90%, and that's what we started with. That ministerial di uh, directive attracted to, uh, uh, provision and schedule of tariff concessions or submission from 29 African Union uh, member states. Uh, that was in September 2022. In the third year, or in 20, uh, uh, 2022, 
we decided to take uh, the, uh, maybe the initiative one more step further. Instead of just uh, working on the legal instruments in terms of schedule of concessions and in terms of uh, market access, let's, we said, why we don't take initiative where we connect governments, we connect businesses to businesses to see uh, what is holding the FCFTA from uh, actual uh, uh, trade. And uh, so it will be uh, difficult to start with the 29 or to start with, uh, now we have 37 uh, uh, members that is part of the uh, schedule of concession. We said it will be difficult for us to start with 29 at once or 37 at once. Let's start with uh, uh, um, some countries. Uh, our initial thought, five countries represent the different regions of uh, Africa. Uh, after we started, we received um, uh, maybe requests to be part of the guided trade, and we ended up with the seven countries for the guided trade that include Tanzania. However, we managed to um, uh, 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 to uh, find or to capture. Uh, already ongoing trades and uh, um, to create uh, maybe a channel between the government to uh, speak together and finally the seven countries or the six countries that we started uh, the trade with which is Cameroon, Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, Mauritius, Rwanda and Tanzania, they, we can say they are online in terms of uh, the uh, legal infrastructure, the trade infrastructure of actually activating the AFCFTA. And we established what we call committee of the AFCFTA Guided Trade Initiative. And that committee is crucial for or uh, uh, the main entry point for any countries that want to engage with the Guided Trade Initiative. So uh, part of, of the recommendations that we are going to recommend to Tanzania is to uh, actively uh, uh, participate in the Guided Trade Initiative Committee. We are having a committee meeting next uh, months where we invite both the private sector and the government uh, uh, to uh, uh, engage on with their counterpart on the, the, the potential of uh, uh, trade. Uh, in the guided trade committee, we have uh, dedicated discussions around customs, around uh, logistics, around uh, 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 market access. So uh, we divided. Uh, the conversation to have more focus, more focus group. So the overall objective of the guided trade initiative, as we said uh, before, demonstrate the efficiency uh, and the framework of the AFCFTA and get feedback on the effectiveness of the legal uh, 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 documents or institutional arrangements. Uh, in some cases, uh, we received feedback that uh, maybe there is more work need to be done in terms of the trading documents. There is more work need to be done in terms of awareness. There is more work need to be uh, done in, te in terms of including our customs official. But this kind of feedback and this kind of uh, 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 reversal way of receiving information, I think, uh, helped us in enhance uh, our engagement with uh, the different countries. To test the readiness of the private sector, again, uh, uh, I don't think that there is any private sector in Africa that uh, is not ready for the AFCT. Everyone is looking forward to, to how to benefit from the AFCT. Uh, um, maybe our main challenge is to make sure that uh, uh, with that desire, the legal infrastructure and uh, the awareness in uh, the governments in all the African countries on the same level, are on the same level, because it is one thing to say we have the legal instrument, uh, one thing to say uh, we ratify the agreement as a country, one thing to say the private sector is ready to harness all the benefits of the FCFTA, and it is totally another thing to go to custom on the border, and uh, they will be on the same level of understanding of what is the AFCFTA uh, tariff concessions and what is the AFCFTA market access. So that is uh, one of our key uh, um, uh, goals. Uh, if we can move on, um, I will not uh, waste time to speak about the 
committee structure, I think when we have uh, the focused uh, um, discussion, we can uh, focus on that, including also the roadmap, if we can uh, move on, colleagues. Um, just here, uh, this is just an example or a showcase of a certificate of origin of actually live uh, uh, products that went under the AFCTA. We can see the products from Ghana, Kenya, Cameroon, Egypt, uh, uh, Mauritius, and uh, Rwanda. Um, actually, if we go back to the case of Rwanda, I want to show something. Uh, when we were doing the Guided Trade Initiative, this was the first certificate of origin issued uh, by Rwanda, which, uh, if we notice, if we go back one slide, uh, we can find that uh, it is not in line with the other uh, 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 rules of origin certificates that has been uh, issued. So after engaging with uh, authorities on Rwanda, we resolved this matter and we streamlined the, the process, so it is part of uh, uh, maybe the good feedback and the good intervention uh, that, or the good interaction we have uh, under the Guided Trade Initiative. It is easy for us at this early stage to, to capture these problems before the goods actually arrive on the border and, and face a uh, problem. So uh, we identified number of uh, companies, number of uh, products, and we listed them. The simple way for anyone to understand the Guided Trade Initiative is as follows. And now I uh, speak um, maybe outside the numbers that is, that is there. The Guided Trade Initiative has two R. First one, connecting the government, and this is what we are doing closely with uh, uh, the ministers of trade and the ministries of trade. The other thing is to capture the trade potential, and this is the part where it says the Guided Trade Initiative. It is more facilitating trade in, 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 instead of guiding them. So we will not tell any country what you can export and what you, can, what you will not be able to export. It is more facilitating. So we would ask the Chamber of Commerce or ask the private sector or ask the Ministry of Trade to tell us in your country what uh, uh, potential exports you identify in terms of products. With those products, what is the name of the companies that you would think that they can represent the, your country in, the, in that first initiative? Uh, also, we would ask each country, please tell us, in terms of imports, what imports from the rest of the world you can substitute with uh, uh, African products uh, to create trade uh, diversion or to change um, uh, the trade pattern. We were so happy to see some of the Ghanaian uh, uh, um, colleagues trying the East African tea from Kenya and from Rwanda for the first time. And uh, the feedback we are getting them, they, some of them think that they, they are testing the real tea for the first time. So uh, creating that demand with the taste because uh, most of the time we are in East Africa, Mesa, we are trading among ourselves, and there is a, 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 a comparative advantage for our products when it goes to, to the West or, or the South, and the same uh, way uh, uh, the, uh, the West are, they are, or the countries in the West, they are rich in many other products that we can complement each other. Also, uh, uh, another aspect of the guided trade is moving up in the value chain. We can't continue speaking only about trading tea versus coffee versus cocoa. No, we uh, um, uh, also, we would be focused on, or we will focus on uh, the activities and the economic activities that will take us up in the, um, uh, the value chain. But again, a guided trade initiative is not uh, something that is only led by the Secretariat. We're creating committee from the member state to guide uh, the trade, and we continue to provide um, uh, uh, support for that. If we can go to uh, directly, this is examples for uh, the, uh, the trade that happened. If we can go to um, the lessons learned. Um, so, uh, we learned 
uh, uh, through the guided trade initiative that the legal framework of the FCFTA is actually uh, working and it's ready. It is a matter of activating or turn on the switch of the FCFTA or not uh, in the countries. Um, we learned that the center, central coordination uh, and uh, implementation committee in the member states are crucial to uh, uh, success of the AFCFTA. In the AFCFTA agreement, uh, there is a requirement to have a national coordination committee. Actually, it, is a, uh, it should be a ministerial coordination committee with uh, dedicated bodies under the ministerial level that focus on anything related to the AFCFTA to make sure that the country are, is moving toward the AFCFTA as one unit. So uh, those countries who have a coordination committee on a central level it was very easy for us to work with and very easy for us to have success uh, with. Number three, the logistical arrangement and capabilities for the, uh, in Africa in general, and it is known, continue to be a problem for us. And um, uh, that one of the uh, feedback that we received in I think we are proposing some ideas or some uh, uh, solution to that. Uh, there is a need for us to promote and engage more with the private sector. And in here, I want to say that we are having our first business forum of the AFCFTA in uh, uh, March, and we will be more than uh, happy to receive um, uh, business sector from uh, Tanzania. And one of the core uh, focus of that business forum will be the activation of the guided trade uh, initiative. Also, the trade finance, the trade finance aspect of uh, uh, the trade also, uh, uh, we, have and, uh, we are working, um, maybe uh, some of us noted that the AFCFTA is signing MOUs and signing um, uh, financial banks and, and big banks to provide a uh, uh, financial uh, uh, solution to the business in Africa instead of uh, just going line. But what is the most important thing is the last one. There is a need for leverage the economies of scale of, of our trade. to create uh, AFCFTA trading companies. Again, I will repeat. Create AFCFTA trading companies. So, uh, uh, here in Ghana, Ghana actually started the real process and they created the AFCFTA, uh, Ghana AFCFTA trading company. What this trading company will do will act as an aggregate whether it is in a format of uh, public-private sector uh, partnership or it is 100% owned by the private sector, it is a trade aggregate. Trading company has, has been proven in the past in different economies that it can significantly uh, contribute to the economic transformation in the early uh, stage of, of, of opening the market and economic uh, development. We've seen that uh, Samsung uh, the, uh, now it is a mobile uh, company. It started as a trading company for rice. Mitsubishi in Japan, uh, uh, Ford in, 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 in the US, uh, um, many, many companies in Turkey, many companies in Europe. All of them, all of the big giants now, they started as a trading companies. And they helped the economies to uh, strive and uh, to develop. So why we don't have or why we don't start this approach here in Africa, here in, in, in Africa. Uh, not uh, going back as uh, the 1970 or 1960, but to see uh, what is the lessons, the good lessons that we can copy from these uh, trading companies. Uh,
trading company should not be the AFT. AFCFT. Uh, I'm, hello? I'm still, can you hear me? Okay, uh, I'm sorry about this technical problem. I was saying that the trading company is the approach that we are trying to uh, uh, work with the different countries uh, on. Trading companies can allow the, the countries to find the right economies of scale uh, to, to reduce the cost of uh, transport, can provide uh, the countries the uh, uh, information needed uh, about the demand, because if, uh, let's say, if Tanzania uh, a trading company is dealing with Ghana trading company, Ghana trading company will have the information on what is the Ghanaian market needs and what is the Ghanaian market can send in the same way uh, the Tanzanian uh, uh, trading company will have the same information. So the business match and uh, the volume of trade uh, can easily be predicted and executed. So that is one of the main things that we are trying to uh, I think this is a checklist for uh, what is required to be uh, uh, part of the guided trade initiative. I think uh, uh, our cooperation or our engagement with Tanzania is beyond that. We, we know that Tanzania have done all of that. Um, and uh, a way forward for us, again, establish a national and regional AFCFT trading company, establish, uh, 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 have a dedicated discussion around transport and logistics. Uh, for the Tanzanian borders to be part of the guided uh, trade in it. And uh, maybe we can, by saying the guided trade initiative again, Project that in Benamiron, we have seen certificates of origin and trade happening after the guided trade initiative without intervention from the AFCFT secretariat, without being part of the guided trade initiative. But the guided trade initiative, where the kick start with the spark that started in this intervention, that will be it from my side. Uh, um, I will be ready to answer any question, and I want to hand to Dr. Harima also. To, to speak about maybe uh, what we can do on a bilateral meeting uh, uh, or, or, or a more focused meeting in Tanzania and how we can engage that. Uh, Dr. Halima, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, very happy to see all of you and very happy that you invited the FCFTA Secretariat to be part. As Director Mohammed said, I will be very happy to have a Tanzanian focused bilateral meeting with URT. So we stand ready anytime. Uh, we will engage with the acting PS, Ali Gugu. So from here, we will communicate with the Ministry of Trade. And now, Takia Kheria Mwakampia Wote, Asante Nisana. Okay, uh, thank you so much. And that will be uh, our presentation. And we are uh, available for any question to, to answer if needed. Thank you. Uh, Mohammed and Alima, I hope you have already started learning Swahili. By now, Mwishmiwa Waziri na Ndugu Wajumbe, na dhani sasa hivi mnafahamu lugha yetu ya Kiswahili ni sehemu ya lugha rasmi zinazotumika katika mikutano ya umoja wa Afrika. Kwa hiyo, ningependa kwa kuanzia hapo hapo katika yali aliyosema Mohammed, moja ya vitu ambavu vya kuvichukua. One of the takeaways ametukaribisha kwamba kuna AFCFTA forum linafanyika tarehe nane hadi kumi Cape Town South Africa na sisi wote tumealikwa malengo 
na ile tukiingia hata kwenye website tutawatumia na link na kwa vile tupo tutajaribu kushare zaidi jambo kubwa ambalo nimepiki kwenye hilo alilolisema kauli mbiu ya kongamano la ufanyaji biashara kwenye Afrika la mwaka huu litakalofanyika South Africa lina kauli mbiu inayosema tujenge pamoja forum 2023 tujipigie makofi jamani Kwa Mr. Mohamed we thank you very much as a secretariat and we want to ensure you our private sector and the public sector will be able to attend uh, the, the, the forum uh, scheduled in March 8th to 10th Mheshimiwa wa Waziri jambo la pili ni ili ambalo wamelimalizia alima nadhani wenzetu tumewasikia wamesema wako tayari kufanya kazi na sisi kuhakikisha kwamba tunasaidiana ili ninyi muweze kuwezesha biashara zenu ziende kule uh, kwenye soko lile la Afrika Mheshimiwa Waziri na sisi kama wasaidizi wako tuko tayari nadhani tulishaanza maongezi nayo nao wenzetu wa secretariat nadhani baada ya mkutano ule wa marais mwezi Februari tutaanza kuwa na mikutano mikubwa sasa ya wadau kuweza kuyajadili haya ambayo tumeanzisha leo uh, katika mkutano huu. Jengine ndugu zangu ambalo Mohamed ameligusia ni kwamba wanatusubiri sisi tuseme ni bidhaa gani tunataka tukaziuze kwenye jumuiya au umoja ule wa Afrika. Products kwa maana ya exports lakini pia tu identify imports ambazo pengine leo tunaziagiza kutoka Ulaya, Marekani lakini kumbe ziko Afrika. Ni zipi? Sisi mheshimiwa waziri kwa maana ya wizara tutashare na nyinyi email maalum ambayo tutawaomba baada ya kikao wiki au wakati wa kikao wiki kila mmoja kwenye eneo lake la biashara atuambie kwamba mimi naona kuna potential ya kuuza kahawa yangu Ghana au Nija mimi nataka kuuza korosho yangu mimi nataka kuuza ufuta kwa sababu lazima iwe ni kampuni na biashara mahususi au bidhaa mahususi kama ambavyo alivyotuambia lakini pia kama we ni mchakataji huko kwenye kiwanda basi useme kama una malighafi ambazo unadhani leo unazitoa nchi fulani kwenye bara jingine tofauti na Afrika na unadhani hiyo bidhaa inaweza kapatikana Morocco Misri pia nayo utuambie kwa sababu hii ni majadiliano au ni ushirikiano wanipe nikupe kama ambavyo tumeona kwamba huyu amepeleka hiki Ghana na yeye amepokea hiki kutoka Ghana na hiyo ndiyo ile boosting into Africa trade ndio kukuza biashara ya Afrika. Kwa ndugu zangu tutatoa ile email tutawaomba kupitia mkutano wetu huu tupate maoni yenu ili sisi sasa tuwezeshe kuhakikisha kwamba hizo bidhaa ambazo mngependa kuziuza Afrika tuweze kuzifanyia kazi. Lakini mheshimiwa waziri kwa maana ya upana wa lile aliloliongea kuna swala lile la ushirikiano. Amesema kuna umuhimu wa kuwa na aggregators ili kuwa na economies of scale. Kuna maeneo pale tunapokuwa ni wafanyabiashara wadogo na wakati ni muhimu tukajumuisha nguvu zetu pamoja ili kujenga nguvu ya soko. Hilo pia ameliamasisha sana katika maelekezo yake au maelezo yake. Lakini la mwisho wa mheshimiwa ni la taarifa ambalo la wenzetu tutaendelea kuwa engage sisi kama wizara kwa maelekezo yako tumeshaandaa rasimu ya mkakati wa utekelezaji wa CFTA, mkakati wa kitaifa. Wengi wenu tumewashirikisha rasimu imekamilika katika yale ambayo TPSF wamesema na TCCI wamesema na CTI wamesema kwa maana ya kuongeza ushirikiano engagement tutakuja na rasimu tuijadili ili na nyinyi muone ile rasimu ya mkakati kama inatufaa kama nchi kuhakikisha tunafaidika na ili soko mheshimiwa waziri baada ya kusema hayo ningeomba sasa nikukaribishe kwa ajili ya kuongea na hadhara hii karibu sana na mtazamaji wa TBC1 sasa uh, katibu uh, naibu katibu mkuu wizara ya uwekezaji viwanda na biashara kimwalika waziri mwenye dhamana ya uwekezaji viwanda na biashara kuweza kuzungumza katika mkutano huu kijadili eneo uhuru la biashara Afrika na namna ambavyo wafanyabiashara wataweza kuchangamkia fursa kwa nchi ambazo iko ndani ya bara la Afrika Waziri Dr. Shoto Kijaji sasa kenda kuzungumza na wafanyabiashara ambao wamefika hapa katika mkutano huu ambao kubwa ni kujengea na uelewa na kuhamasishana kuchangamkia fursa za kibiashara chini ya mkataba wenye uhuru la biashara Afrika. Alibugu naibu katibu mkuu Wizara ya Uwekezaji, Viwanda na Biashara. 
Kaka yangu leo digaachila tenga mkurugenzi mtendaji wa CTI na leo ukiwakilisha sekta binafsi kwa ujumla. Gili Aditeri, mkurugenzi mtendaji wa TPSF, nimefurahi kukuona kwamba umerejea na tuko nasi. Ndugu zangu sana ambao ni walengwa wa tukio letu la leo, wafanyabiashara na wawekezaji, watumishi wenzangu wa serikali mliopo nasi hapa. Ndugu zangu waandishi wa habari, mabibi na mabwana Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Nianze kwa kumshukuru sana Mwenyezi Mungu mwingi wa rehma ambaye ametukutanisha sisi hapa asubuhi siku hii ya leo kwa ajili ya jukumu hili muhimu sana kwa ajili ya kuongea kwa pamoja tunaanzaje tunanufaikaje tunajua tunaanzaje sasa kuifanya biashara katika eneo huru la biashara Afrika Naomba niwapongeze wote mlio shiriki pamoja nasi. Huu ni mwanzo mzuri hasa ndugu zangu kutoka sekta binafsi na vyama vyenu vyote. Asanteni sana 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 na karibuni kwa ushirikiano na mshikamano huu ni imani yangu tutafanikiwa kwa pamoja na hatutokuwa wasindikizaji kwenye soko hili la eneo huru la biashara Afrika. Asanteni sana sana. Kwa watendaji wenzangu ndani ya serikali lakini ndani ya wizara ya uwekezaji, viwanda na biashara tumechelewa kidogo na lazima tukimbie sasa kuona jambo hili linafanikiwa na taifa linanufaika na jitihada ambazo mheshimiwa rais wetu mama yetu mheshimiwa Samia Suluh Hassan anazifanya katika kuifungua nchi yetu kuiunganisha nchi yetu na dunia kupitia diplomasia ya uchumi. Kwa hiyo nitoe wito wangu kwenu ni muda kwetu sasa wa kukimbia kwa pamoja nani tuonge naye nani tumshike mkono ili tuweze kunufaika na soko hili la eneo huru la biashara Afrika. Ndugu zangu Naomba nitumie nafasi hii kurejea yale ambayo wameyasema wenzangu waliotangulia na walikomalizia kaka yetu Muhammad Ali pamoja na Halima kutoka Secretariat ya eneo huru la biashara Afrika kwamba uamuzi huu wa mataifa ya Afrika kuanzisha eneo huru la biashara Afrika ni kutokana na ukweli kwamba hata basini ya uhuru wa na yetu ndani ya Afrika. Biashara yetu tunayoifanya ndani ya Afrika. Nchi kwa nchi wafanyabiashara wa nchi moja na wafanyabiashara wa nchi nyingine ni asilimia sita tu. Hii ni ndogo sana. Na ufanyaji biashara wetu huu mdogo ndani ya Afrika yetu inatupelekea pia hata kule tunakosema tunafanya nao biashara kwa kiwango kikubwa mchango wetu kwenye biashara kwenye dunia ni asilimia mbili tu nukta sita. Kwa sisi wa Afrika tunachokipeleka duniani ni asilimia mbili nukta sita ya biashara nzima inayofanyika duniani. Kwa tunatakiwa kukaa kwa pamoja, kuongea kwa pamoja na kutathmini na kutafakari nini tufanye. Tukiangalia wenzetu wanafanya nini? Tukichukulia bara la Asia. Wao kwa wao biashara yao kati ya nchi na nchi wafanya biashara wa nchi moja na nchi ya pili wawekezaji wa nchi moja kwenda nchi ya pili wenzetu wamefika asilimia hamsini na mbili. Sisi tuko asilimia sita. Lakini tukienda kwa nchi za Ulaya, wao kwa wao biashara yao wanayoifanya wenzetu wako asilimia sabini wanafanya biashara wao kwa wao kwa hiyo sisi bado tuna safari ndefu sana ya kuhakikisha tunasogea na kulinufaisha bara letu na rasilimali ambazo Mwenyezi Mungu ametubariki kama Afrika 
na kunufaika nazo kibiashara kiuwekezaji na hatimaye kukuza pato la mataifa yetu na pato la Afrika yetu. Kwa kulijua hilo viongozi wetu wakaamua twendeni tufanye biashara pamoja. Kwa sababu walijiuliza swali hivi ni kweli hatuna fursa za kufanya biashara sisi kwa sisi kama wa Afrika. Viongozi wetu wakuu wa nchi zetu za Afrika kwenye mkutano wao wa kawaida wa 18 ambao ulifanyika mwezi Januari mwaka 2012 pale jijini Addis Ababa Ethiopia wakaagiza kuanza kwa mchakato kuanzisha eneo huru la biashara Afrika kwa kuzingatia kama tulivyosikia pamoja ajenda yetu ya 2063 yenye kauli mbili kauli mbiu inayosema Afrika tuitakayo ajenda 2063 the Africa we want niwashukuru sana sekta binafsi kama ambavyo mmekiri wenyewe tumeshirikiana tangu agizo hili lilivotoka kwa wakuu wa nchi tukaanza kwa pamoja kuainisha fursa sasa za kwenda kunufaika na soko huru la biashara ndani ya Afrika yetu malengo makuu ya ACFTA ni kuwa na soko moja la bidhaa na huduma ndio maana leo tuko hapa wazalishaji wa bidhaa yani CTI wako na sisi lakini ndugu zetu wasafirishaji mko na sisi hapa kama watu wa huduma ili tuongee kwa pamoja ni huduma zipi tunazipeleka ndani ya Afrika yetu lakini ndani ya taasisi za fedha tuko pamoja kujua ni huduma zipi tunataka basi tuzipeleke ndani ya Afrika yetu ili tunufaike sisi wenyewe taifa letu na Afrika yetu kwa ujumla. Lakini lengo la pili ilikuwa ni uhuru wa kusafiri kwa wafanyabiashara na mitaji. Uhuru wa kusafiri kwa wafanyabiashara na mitaji. Tusafiri ndani ya bara la Afrika tukiwa huru bila vikwazo vyovyote. Tusafirishe mitaji yetu kutoka nchi yoyote ndani ya Afrika kwenda nchi nyingine ndani ya Afrika yetu. Jambo jingine ilikuwa ni kuimarisha ushirikiano wa biashara na uwekezaji miongoni mwa nchi za Afrika. Nini tunawekeza pamoja? Kama tulivyosikia tunahitaji agreements wa ndani ya nchi lakini nje ya nchi yetu ndani ya Afrika yetu ili tuongeze mchango wetu kwenye ufanyaji biashara duniani. Mtanzania mfanyabiashara, mtanzania mwekezaji kupitia faida hizi na fursa hizi huzuiwi kumtafuta aggregator kutoka nchi yoyote Afrika tukaungana kuzalisha bidhaa zinazokidhi viwango vya soko la Ulaya tukapeleka kuuza Ulaya. Hatuzuiwi kuungana ili tufikie viwango vile ambavyo tunajiona sisi wa Tanzania hatuna ili tufikie soko la Marekani na kwa taarifa tu njema baada ya kikao kilichopita kati ya viongozi wa Marekani na viongozi wakuu wa nchi za Afrika kilichomalizika mwezi Disemba tunakwenda kuongezewa mkataba ule wa Goa kwa miaka mingine kumi. Nini tunanufaika nacho kama wa Tanzania? Nini tunanufaika nacho kama wa Afrika? Ndicho viongozi wetu wakuu wa nchi Uh, ndani ya bara letu waliamua sasa tuonge kwa pamoja tujenge kwa pamoja Afrika yetu. Lakini tunapoyafanya yote haya tunanufaika na nini? Tunapoyafanya yote haya tunalenga kukuza na kujenga uchumi wa viwanda na uzalishaji barani Afrika. Kukuza uwezo na kujenga uwezo wa uchumi wetu wa viwanda na uzalishaji barani Afrika. Wakati anaongea mkurugenzi mtendaji wa CTI hapa amesisitiza jambo muhimu sana. Viwango. Viwango vyetu vya bidhaa zetu 
tunazozalisha tayari kwa kupeleka Afrika lakini tayari kwa kupeleka duniani. Tunapongelea viwango hivi ndani ya viwanda vyetu, viwango hivi kwa watoaji huduma wenzetu wanaotoa huduma kwenye soko hili wasafirishaji tunatoa huduma ya aina gani ndio msingi wa kuanzishwa wa eneo huru la biashara Afrika ili kwa pamoja tuongee kiwango kimoja ndani ya Afrika ambacho kinaweza kwenda kwenye eneo lolote ndani ya ulimwengu huu na sisi tunafahamu tumebarikiwa kama taifa tuna ardhi nzuri ambayo sisi tunaangaliwa na wenzetu ndani ya Afrika ndani ya dunia kwamba tuna uwezo wa kuzalisha bidhaa za kilimo ambazo zitauzwa kwenye Afrika nzima na zitauzwa duniani alichokisema mkurugenzi mtendaji hapa wa TPSF balozi yule wa Namibia alitamani kuihamisha Mbeya aipeleke Namibia kwa sababu hawana Kwa sasa sisi hiyo ni fursa yetu lazima tuitumie tunawezaje kutumia ardhi nzuri tulionayo kunufaika na soko hili la eneo huru la biashara Afrika tunatumiaje ardhi nzuri tulionayo tuliobarikiwa na Mwenyezi Mungu kuzalisha bidhaa zenye ubora zinazohitajika kule ulimwenguni ndugu zangu ndio maana kwenye kikao hiki tunazo taasisi zote zinazohusika na viwango Tibia si tunao hapa lakini tunao Tantred wako hapa wa kutuambia kule duniani viwango vinavyotakiwa ni vipi ili sisi sasa wazalishaji na wafanyabiashara tuzalishe kwa viwango vinavyohitajika duniani. Kwa siku ya leo tumeamua kuja na kikao hiki ili tuongee kwa pamoja. Ni wapi tupo? Nini tufanye? kipi kimetukwamisha mwaka jana hatukuingiza bidhaa yetu hata moja kwenye eneo huru la biashara Afrika tupo wazalishaji tupo watoaji huduma lazima tuongee kwa pamoja na tutoke na maazimio sasa ambayo yatatuambia na lazima yawe maazimio ya kupimika kwamba tarehe moja Julai mwaka 2023 wa Tanzania tunapeleka bidhaa kumi ni kikao cha leo ndio tunaanza mchakato huo na tunapofika tarehe moja Julai tuwe na bidhaa kumi tayari kuingia kwenye eneo huru la biashara Afrika. Ndugu zangu zimetajwa takwimu hapa. Ya wateja tulionao najua nyinyi wafanyabiashara mnajua inapotajwa ndani ya bara la Afrika tuna wananchi bilioni moja nukta nne maana yake nini kwa wafanyabiashara mnajua hili ni soko lazima tulifikie inapo 